in the last stream, we were working on finally automating the placing and killing of the wither in this compact machine here to give us essentially a way to automatically generate nether stars so that going forward, if we want to craft any of the expensive late game items or machines that require nether stars, we should just be able to turn this exporter back on, tell it to export source end and wither skeleton skulls. And in doing so, we should begin to get nether stars once again. Now, as of right now, that system is offline. The reason for that is that towards the end of the last stream, we did start to run into some ever so slight power issues. As you can see here, our magmatic dynamo is currently running at maximum capacity. It's producing 480 redstone flux per tick. And yet, if we look in the energy cube here, we are completely out of energy. So it's clear that we're currently not producing enough redstone flux per tick to run everything in the base, let alone any of the uh, extra machines and systems that are currently not online and not running. And so that is why in today's stream, I would like to start working on the extreme reactors quest line and see if we can't get an extreme reactor up and running to produce hopefully a couple of thousand redstone flux per tick. Currently, we're on the latest version of the mod pack and the newest version of the mod pack did kind of break the quests a little bit. You'll notice that none of these quests seem to be completed. And so for the duration of today's stream, it's gonna look like we don't actually complete any quests. Hopefully uh, I can fix this between streams when we come back, uh, we can complete all of these quests. But uh, in the interest of still progressing on with the quest line, I'm gonna try and complete the quests in the Extreme Reactors quest line, even though we currently can't complete them, if that makes sense. Either way, if we're gonna get started with Extreme Reactors, there are a couple of things that we are going to need. We need reactor casing, which is uh, kind of the bedrock of a reactor. It's the block used most often in making the multi-block. We also need a reactor controller. That would be the brains of the reactor. Uh, you can optionally add a redstone port. This would allow you to toggle the reactor on and off using a redstone signal. Something we could look at doing, uh, you may remember in a previous stream, we automated pink slime using this uh, redstone logic channel. We could do something similar with our reactor to where we have a reactor that is turned off automatically if we already have a certain amount of power. So if we hit like a certain you know buffer amount, let's say a million redstone flux, we could then turn off the reactor to try and save on uranium. Uh, that might be something we set up in the future, but for now, I think we'll focus on getting the main reactor up and running before we look at doing that. Uh, there's also the reactor solid access port. Uh, this allows you to add and remove fuel from the reactor, as it says in the tooltip. The reactor fuel rods determine how much uranium you can put into the reactor at any given time. And of course, the more uranium that you can put into the reactor, the more power that reactor can produce. But at the same time, the more uranium it will actively use. Uh, there's also the Reactor Active Forge Energy Power Tap Basic, which is an overly long name for the power tap here, but essentially that allows you to pull power out of the reactor. And then finally, there are the reactor control rods, and these go atop your reactor fuel rods uh, just as part of the multi-block. So uh, for those who don't know, by the way, the reactor here is basically a big multi-block that you put down and fill with fuel rods to allow you to turn uranium into power. That's kind of the long and short of extreme reactors. Now, at the moment, we don't really have too much space in our base for an extreme reactor. And so I'm actually thinking that what I might go ahead and do is quickly craft up another one of these giant compact machines here. In fact, we could probably take it even further and go for a maximum compact machine. This is a 13 by 13 by 13 compact machine. The recipe for it is exactly the same as the giant compact machine, it just requires a block of emerald instead of a block of diamond. And given that we do now have emeralds being generated uh, by the sifting of overworld matter, it's probably fairly easy for us to make one of these. So there is two more blaze wood that uh, once again is just molten blaze over a uh, nether plank. And so bank over in here, we'll grab two obsidian, drop both of those into the induction smelter. That should hopefully fairly quickly get us the machine wall, at which point uh, we will be able to make that maximum size compact machine. Now, this is a little overkill uh, because this room here is 13 by 13 by 13 in size. However, the maximum size that you can make a an extreme reactor is five by five by five, at least if you're using 
uh, the basic casing. You'll notice that all of the blocks here all say basic in brackets at the end. Uh, so you have basic reactor casing, uh, basic reactor controller, you have basic reactor access ports, basic fuel rods, etc., etc. If you wanted to upgrade and make your reactor bigger than a 5x5x5, five by five by five, you can do that. Uh, but at that point, you have to invest in reinforced casing and reinforced control rods and reinforced controller and a reinforced access port. You basically have to make every part of the reactor reinforced. And at that point, you can go bigger than a 5x5 five by five reactor. I don't think we're going to bother with that for today, uh, mostly because we probably don't need more power than we're going to get from the 5x5 five five reactor, at least not just yet. And also all of the quests here do want us uh, to hand in basic versions of those blocks. And so for the time being, uh, let's go ahead and see if we don't have what it takes to make that maximum size compact machine. We do, perfect. Again, for now I'll put this here, but going forward, I think I might move these elsewhere. And uh, if we pop inside real quick, we should see that we now have a very large 13 by 13 by 13 room within which we can put our extreme reactor and then using Flux Networks, we can move the power generated by the reactor out into the overworld uh, and use it for the rest of our bits. So if we're going to get started here, let's have a look at uh, casing. So if we're going to make some of the regular basic casing here, this is made with iron ingots, graphite bars, and steel ingots. Now, at the moment, I think of those three items, the only thing that our refined storage system doesn't know how to make is graphite bars. And thankfully, Graphite bars are going to be super easy for us to teach the system. It's just one piece of coal uh, smelted in a regular furnace. And of course, given that we do have a very fast Supremium furnace, uh, we can just do something like this. Uh, and in fact, we didn't even need to come over here because of course, in the last stream, uh, we did also set up the Crafter Manager. I've got to remember uh, to use that whenever we add a new recipe. Uh, in fact, if we were to go ahead and quickly just teach our system how to make the uh, reactor casing here, we can put that into our diamond crafter. And at that point, we should just be able to request the 22 reactor casing that the quest requires. Now that does say that it needs a steel ingot. And of course the reason that it thinks it needs a steel ingot is that uh, in here, we've used the wrong kind of steel. Uh, thankfully that is a very easy fix. We just do this and re-encode, drop that back in. And once again, 22 reactor casing, start and start. That might take a little while to complete simply due to the fact uh, that it does take a little while for uh, so much steel to be generated. But in general, I don't think it's going to take too, too long. While we're waiting for that, let's have a look at some of the other parts. In fact, let's bookmark the uh, casing, the controller, the fuel rods, the control rod, the access port, the power tap, and potentially even the redstone access port. Again, still not entirely certain if we're going to make that, but we might just get it uh, anywhere. So while we wait for everything else here, let's have a look. We can make a piston. That's easy enough. Uh, we can also make a redstone repeater, which is missing two redstone torches. Boom. As for the reactor fuel rods, these also seem pretty doable. Uh, they need uranium, more graphite bars, more iron, and more glass. I think I might go ahead and just request maybe even like two stacks of graphite bars. Just having those in the system ready to go should we need them for all this crafting here. Um, I think it's going to make our lives tremendously easier. Um, I also think it's entirely possible that we are going to need more reactor casing than the default 22. And in fact, I think it's almost certain that we're going to need more, but we can get to that in a second. Uh, redstone blocks, of course, we can make very easily. And then for the tap here, we do need another uh, comparator and a redstone repeater, but none of that should be too difficult for us. And so in fact, outside of more reactor casing, I think we're pretty much good to go to make basically everything here. So the initial 22 casing there is done. I think this might be the number required to complete all of these quests. So let's have a look. We can probably go straight in with the reactor controller. We can. Uh, we should be able to make at least one of these reactor fuel rods, although we are going to need a lot more than one going forward. The same is also true uh, for the reactor control rod. The solid access port is just missing a chest as well as another piston. That is done. Uh, we then have the power tap, very easy. And of course the redstone access port is also done. So we have all of the parts here. Um, I did just pick up our network transmitter. So right now the uh, wireless refined storage isn't working uh, inside of this uh, wither compact machine. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, our refined storage system as a whole uh, was using like 350 uh, FE per tick, 
which combined with the new uh, compressed auto hammer using 120 FE per tick, put our power system basically just out of power completely. And so temporarily I've removed that until we can get this reactor online. And speaking of the reactor, if we're going to build a five by five by five reactor, we're going to need quite a bit of casing. So uh, let's quickly go and request another stack here because essentially the way this works is uh, you start out with a default uh, five by five base. And then we basically have to put casing down in a five by five cube. So this will be two, three, four, and then five like that. Uh, so we basically build a five by five cube almost entirely out of reactor casing. We then have the controller anywhere in the reactor. Uh, usually the way this works is it has to be not in the edge of the reactor. Chat is also pointing out that we should move our spawn point again. So uh, if we come over here, for example, and shift right click, we have a new spawn point set. So now whenever we leave and go back in, uh, we don't get stuck in the casing here. Now we can leave some space as well. I did not mean to put the tank down there, but uh, there are other things we do have to put into the exterior of the reactor. Uh, for example, basically everything here goes in the exterior. So the excess port goes in the exterior, the power tap goes in the exterior, and the redstone port also goes in the exterior. The fuel rods, they go in the middle. Uh, so for now, I'll put one, I guess, right about here. And then you put the reactor control rods at the top of the reactor, uh, basically on top of the fuel rods. So we're going to have fuel rods go up through the middle. Uh, so we need like at least two more here to fill this line. And then... In reality, I'm fairly certain you can put as many uh, reactor fuel rods into the reactor as you like. Of course, with this reactor, uh, the internal space is a 3x3x3, three by three by three, which gives you a maximum of 27 slots within which you can put fuel rods. Now, alongside fuel rods, you also have moderator blocks. Uh, moderator blocks, also known as coolants, can be used to make your uranium burning more efficient. So basically, you can put as many of these fuel rods into the reactor as you like, but the more of the fuel rods that you put in, the less efficient you're going to be with your uranium, right? You will produce more power. So if you fill this with 27, you would produce a ton of power, but it would be very inefficient because a lot of your power will be being wasted generating heat. However, if you put moderator blocks in or coolant in, you can get less power, but you can be more efficient with your uranium, if that makes sense. So there's definitely a balance to be struck here. I think what we're going to do is we're probably going to go ahead and do maybe like five lines of control rods. So basically 15 uh, fuel rods and then fill in the other four lines with coolant. And we'll get to coolants in just a second. Let me quickly check uh, to see if we don't have some more casing ready to go. We do not, however, we can check up over in here. We are basically just waiting for a bunch of steel and a bunch of graphite, which hopefully shouldn't take too, too long. Surprisingly, the uh, thing slowing down the Supremium Furnace here is actually the crafter. So you'll see here that the crafter is not sending the uh, steel dust to the Supremium Furnace fast enough to keep up with how fast the Supremium Furnace is. Uh, that can be rectified if we make some more uh, speed upgrades, just like we did with the exporter for our crafter over uh, in the wall there. Uh, we can put speed and even stack upgrades into the crafters to make them actually send items faster. So for example, if I take one of these and put it in over like this, this guy should now send items to the Supremium Furnace ever so slightly faster. So now that next stack of casing is done, we can once again head on back through into our little compact machine here. And again, for now, we'll do something like this and we'll also fill in the rest of the casing. Uh, the holes that I'm leaving here are where we're going to put more reactor control rods in just a second. And then we can also fill the rest of these in as well. Um, I actually don't know with this mod whether or not there is casing glass. There totally is. How hard is that to make? It's actually super easy to make. And so in fact, I, I might look at replacing some of this uh, reactor casing uh, with reactor glass a little bit later on in today's stream. Uh, but for now, just to get the uh, proof of concept actually working. Uh, let's quickly see if we don't have what it takes to make 14 more fuel rods. Again, well, I feel like we should be able to make these fairly easily. Uh, they don't require any casing. They're just iron, graphite, uranium, and glass. Uranium-wise, we do have over 2,000 
uranium ready to go. Uh, surprisingly, it's just the graphite that we're missing. But at this point, if we once again uh, go ahead and request another 128, we should hopefully now uh, see that getting sent to the Supremium Furnace faster. And you'll see now the crafter here is capable of sending things to the Supremium Furnace faster than the Supremium Furnace can smelt them, which is exactly what we want. So let us see, how many of these can we make? We want a grand total of 14. Perfect. Uh, we also need four more reactor control rods. These are slightly more expensive. However, we do have a good amount of reactor casing here. And so one, two, three, and four, good stuff. And at that point, we move on to moderator blocks or coolants. So there are quite a few blocks that you can use to cool your reactor. And I've done some testing between streams in a single player world to try and figure out um, which coolant is best. And although there are different tiers of coolant and there are some coolants that are better than others, for a reactor of this size, it really doesn't seem to matter too much whether or not you go with a high tier coolant or like a super high tier coolant. So for example, uh, diamond blocks are a very good coolant uh, and what we're probably going to use but if you wanted to push things even further, emerald blocks and netherite blocks are technically better coolants. However, the amount of extra energy that you get from using emerald blocks or netherite blocks is so small, like the benefit you get, the extra power is so small. It's like less than a 1% gain to the point where it's probably just not worth it most of the time, unless you're swimming in netherite or emeralds. And so I think for us, what we're probably gonna go ahead and do here is just craft up 12 diamond blocks, like so. Also, some people will ask in the YouTube comments, but uh, unfortunately, uh, in the newer versions of Thermal Expansion, there is no uh, resin ender, so there's no liquid ender pearls, there's no jelly cryothium, uh, no destabilized redstone, nothing like that. So none of the normal liquids uh, that you would have used in previous versions of Minecraft uh, to get super cool reactors. Uh, but if we do something like this and put the control rods into the roof, we can then put our blocks of diamond basically anywhere that doesn't have a control rod. And then we wanna put the fuel rods underneath the control rods, right? So something like this, like this, uh, like this with diamonds here, control rods here, diamonds here, diamonds here, and control rods here. Now, you don't have to fill this space, by the way. And in fact, uh, just to kind of show, again, proof of concept here and show how the uh, reactor works. What I'll do initially is we'll just do something like this, right? We'll leave just the one uh, reactor fuel rod in the middle. And so now if we were to uh, fill in the front there with more uh, reactor casing, what we should see once we fill this in is the reactor form. Uh, if we right click, it says only fuel rods can be used here. Interesting. Uh, let me try, I'm gonna have to remove the uh, stuff up here. So you'll know when you've done this right because you'll put the last block in and it will form into a multi-block. So right now uh, inside of here, just for proof of concept, I've taken out everything but the middle fuel rods and control rod. So now if we fill this in, the reactor is ready to go. And all we have to do to actually get it to start is put some uranium in. So let's go ahead and grab some uranium. Of course, once we have this up and running, uh, we're going to want to once again, set up some wireless redstone at wireless refined storage to export the uranium into this compact machine. But for now, if we take this uranium and we put it into this access port, uh, right now, by the way, uh, it's set to input with the red arrows pointing in. Uh, you can change that to output. And we might want to make a second access port because you do get uh, an ingot back. I believe we get cyanite back. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that you put uranium in, the uranium is then used by the reactor and we should get cyanite back. Um, and so eventually we are going to want to set up another access port to take the cyanide out of the reactor to prevent things from backing up. For now though, if we put the uranium in the input side, you'll see the number goes down there. That is the uranium getting turned into core fuel in the middle here. Uh, you'll see right now it's 95.83% full. And if we go ahead and click on, uh, you'll see that we should start to generate redstone blocks. And we do, nice. The number's gonna slowly creep up and eventually stabilize out it's looking like it's gonna stabilize around 450 redstone flux per tick. Yeah, about 442-ish FE per tick. Now, if we turn this off, what we can now do is we can head on back inside. And I guess actually in the case, just to test it, if I put down some coolants in here now, let's say we put some diamond blocks down like so, that should change the properties of the reactor. So let's go ahead and turn this back on. 
So you'll see now that we are producing a lot more power. And the reason for that is that we're getting, we're being more efficient with our reactor, right? Uh, we're more efficiently using the uh, 0 0.080 millibuckets per tick of fuel that we're currently using. So just putting those blocks of diamonds in has almost, uh, has over doubled the amount of Fe per tick that we can produce. Now we can take this further, as I mentioned before, uh, if we start putting in some of the extra fuel rods, for example, if we put one here and then bring that down like so, we can once again, turn this on. And you'll see now that we're using more than double the amount of fuel that we were using previously. We're using 0.164 millibuckets per tick as opposed to uh, the 0.08 millibuckets per tick that we were using before. So we have more than doubled it, but at the same time, we have also doubled our power output. We're producing 1,900 Fe per tick. Now at the moment, that power is not going anywhere because our energy buffer is full. Let's head back to the, uh, the overworld here. And let's see, I think, about upgrading our energy cell, that being uh, this guy down here. Right now, this can hold up to 1.6 million Fe, but I think we can probably up that number by quite a substantial amount. If we type in uh, energy cube, the next tier here is the advanced energy cube, which really isn't too difficult. It requires the regular energy cube along with two energy tablets and then four infused alloys and two osmium ingots with our old energy cube in the middle. And now this can hold up to 6.4 million Fe. In fact, I think what we might do is, I think we might just go ahead and make a second energy cube for inside of the compact machine. So uh, we can of course request the uh, steel casing, start and start. And then we should have basically everything else here that we need to make two more energy tablets and uh, by extension an energy cube. We're just waiting on that steel casing to complete. Uh, and then of course, actually we could go ahead and make two more energy tablets uh, because I think ideally we want to get at least a, uh, an advanced energy cube into the compact machine. So there is our basic energy cube. And if we want to upgrade, we are missing uh, infused alloys. Now, unfortunately, right now, our uh, infusing factory is dedicated to just using coal. And so if we want to make things like infused alloys, uh, we are going to have to make yet another metallurgic infuser. Thankfully, the metallurgic infuser is super easy to make and adding it to our system should just be as simple as grabbing one more Xnet connector. All right, so I've put this uh, basic infusing factory down, or should I say I put the metallurgic infuser down and then upgraded it once again to another basic infusing factory and given it its own Xnet connector so that it has power. And so uh, at this point, we should be able to once again uh, throw in some redstone and some iron. And uh, if we turn on the auto sort here, we should fairly quickly get some more alloys, at which point uh, we should be able to upgrade our energy cube fairly quickly. So a few infused alloys later, and boom, we have another advanced energy cube. So now if we head on back into our compact machine, we can drop this down, I guess, basically on the uh, power output tap like that. And uh, as long as the back there is set to input, which it is by default with the front here being set to output, uh, that is now storing our redstone flux. And uh, if we wanted to, we could turn this back on and we should start to see uh, this number here going up. Nice. Now, there are a few ways, I guess, we could work with trying to use the redstone port here. One of the simplest ways might just be to get a comparator. I actually don't know if comparators work with the energy cell, but usually the way that the comparators do work is that if you put a comparator down like this, uh, it will emit a redstone signal relative to how much power it currently has. You'll see right now it's at uh, almost halfway and you'll see the uh, power level in the top left there is seven. We should see that go up to eight. And it did, perfect. So as that number goes up there, the power being given out by the comparator also goes up, which makes complete sense. And so um, one of the easiest, if not also jankiest ways that you can set this up is by, for example, having like the redstone access port like here. I'm gonna quickly try and grab these guys, beautiful. Uh, if we put down the redstone port here, and then let's also put down like the energy port, like maybe over here, like that. What we can do then is we can have our energy cube down. In front of that energy cube, we can of course have the comparator, which is currently over here. Uh, 
like that. And then, despite being somewhat janky, we can then run redstone around to the redstone port. And basically, what that's going to do, if we do this, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Once the redstone power here gets to eleven, that should send a redstone signal to the reactor port, telling the reactor to stop producing power. So uh, let's quickly uh, rebuild the reactor here, and of course, go ahead and turn that back on. So now we should see uh, this number here, the power number coming out of the uh, comparator, continue to go up. Once it hits 11, we should see power here activate. Once that activates, the reactor should turn off. In here, we do have to specify. So right now, uh, we want it to be an on-off signal, set from signal. Yeah, we want it uh, on-off, set from signal, and save. And so now I think that this should be off. Okay, so it turns out that's not exactly how it works. It looks like it needs to be inverted, something like this. So now, because there's a redstone signal coming from this comparator, the redstone torch here is off, and therefore the reactor is also off. Now, if we start to use the power coming out of this advanced energy cube, which is exactly what we want to do, let's imagine we go and grab this uh, flux point, which again, I think is definitely what I do want to do here. We'll take this. And in fact, what I might do is I might even go as far as to put down a flux plug. So there is our flux point. So if we put the flux point down on this energy cube here, what that's going to allow us to do, and also we do need to remember to set that to input again, which is red like that, and also set that to the gaming on caffeine network like so. Uh, but essentially putting down a flux point there is going to allow this energy cube to receive power from the energy cube in the compact machine, which is basically allowing the whole base to use the power generated by this reactor. Because right now, most of our machines are not connected to the flux network, if that makes sense. They're connected uh, via Xnet to that energy cube under the auto sieves. So over here, we're gonna put down the flux plug. We're gonna set the top to output, like so. We should then start to see the power number go down. And when it goes down low enough, that this redstone signal turns off, we should see the reactor turn on, produce a bit of power, uh, enough power to turn the redstone signal back on, thus turning the reactor off. And so we should essentially be in an endless loop here where the reactor is only ever turned on when there's not enough power. And when there is enough power, the reactor turns off and then power is used. When power is used, uh, the reactor turns back on to compensate and the whole system repeats itself. You'll see right now it's online. That's gonna turn this redstone back on any second now. Once this turns back on, the reactor's gonna go off, etc., etc forever and ever. That's kind of the plan. Now, given that this system is producing already way more power than we need, I think what we can probably just go ahead and do is fill in the rest of the control rods because I really don't think it's gonna make too much of a difference either way. One, two, and three. So now all of those fuel rods are down. The reactor does now have the ability to produce a lot more power, I think up to about three and a half thousand uh, redstone flux per tick, but uh, you'll see that it never really gets to that stage because we, at the minute, are not using anywhere near that much power. Now, of course, as we press forward into the pack, the amount of power that we're using actively is going to continue to go up. And in fact, if we head on back through uh, to the uh, overworld here, we can replace down our network transmitter right about there, and we can replace in the network card. That's going to instantly increase the amount of power used by our refined storage system. And on top of that, we're also going to want to make another uh, network transmitter and receiver, of course, to send uranium and to retrieve cyanide from that reactor. So network receiver and network transmitter. Once again, uh, of course, we need another network card, which requires more quartz enriched iron. Uh, we should definitely look at setting up some kind of uh, requester to keep quartz enriched iron stocked in our system at all times. So we basically always have it. Uh, we're also going to need another exporter as well for the uh, uranium. And we probably also want to make an importer to start to import the cyanide that we're gonna produce. And speaking of which, we should definitely make another reactor solid access port. So another one of these guys right here, which is a, another hopper as well as another piston, beautiful. And of course, we're gonna set that one to output uh, to go along with the uh, importer. As for the network card, we now have the quartz enriched iron to make it. So for now, I'll once again put the network transmitter down just above the last one, like so. And then over in here, we're going to put down 
our network receive. Uh, let's say that we do it over here. And then let's say that we put both of these ports in on this side. So we'll have, uh, for example, one here and one here. Boom and boom. And we'll make sure one is set to input, which it is by default. And the other will set to output like that. We will then have the exporter on the inlet and the importer on the outlet like so. We then want to shift right click the network card on the network receiver to link it to that network receiver. Uh, at that point, we can hook all of these up like so. And now if we head back over into here, we can drop our network card. That is once again, gonna increase the power usage of our refined storage system to almost 400 red stone flux per tick. But now we should be able to take this uranium. And if we add that to the exporter here, like so, we should start to see the fuel number in here going up. And we can, nice. And you'll see that as the fuel amount goes up, the power is going up as well. And it looks like maybe I was a little conservative before because it is looking like it might get a bit closer uh, to 4,000 redstone flux per tick. Uh, of course, if it's left to run at maximum speed for an extended period of time, of course, going forward, it's unlikely that we're going to ever have it running, um, or at least in the near future, it's unlikely that we're going to have it running at maximum capacity for an extended period of time because right now um, our base is not using 4,000 uh, redstone flux per tick. But uh, in general, the system is working. In the future, if we wanted to, we could look at making that reactor bigger. As I mentioned earlier, we could invest in the reinforced version to produce even more power. Um, although I think once we get to the point where we need even more than 4,000 redstone flux per tick, it might be worth uh, taking a look into some of the late game mechanism power generators uh, because those can really produce just an insane amount of redstone flux uh, to really compensate for the late game stuff that we may or may not need to get into in this pack. However, now that, that is taken care of, the next thing that I would like to work on in today's stream, uh, as I mentioned in the last stream, is creative flight. So we did set up a system that turns all of our inferior essence directly into insane essence. And so now going forward, if we need, for example, supreme essence, we can just request that our system craft it and it will craft it. It'll take the insane essence and craft it down into supreme essence. And so unfortunately, Right now, we don't have that much insane essence. We only had 18, now we've got 15. And so we really can't make that much Supremium. However, I believe in order to get creative mode flight, all we need is the Supremium chest plate. Now, of course, in the future, I would very much so like to get a full set of Supremium armor. However, for the time being, if we wanted to make a Supremium chest plate, we need a Prosperity gemstone, which is four Prosperity shards around a diamond. We'll take a few of those just in case. Uh, we then need two of these Supremium gemstones. We also need two Supremium ingots, which again we can make with Prosperity ingots and Supremium, neither of which are too difficult for us to do. From there, we also need an Imperium chestplate as well as a Tertium chestplate and a Prudentium chestplate and an Inferium chestplate. So this is where things could get a little bit tricky. So let's make a bunch of these gemstones here. Again, I think we've got like 2,000 Prosperity shards and uh, over a thousand diamonds. So neither of those should be too difficult. I'm also gonna bookmark the chest plate here just in case, or just to make life easier. So we'll take two Inferium ingots. We'll also make two uh, Inferium gems. So diamond chest plate into Inferium chest plate. And now we have to do the same thing with all of the other tiers. So we need, I guess, how many do we need of each tier? We need two, four, six, eight of each tier of essence, right? So let's see if we can make that happen. Can we get uh, eight Prudentium? We can. I'm gonna wait for that to finish because then we can start working on the Tertium. Start and start. Perfect. We then need seven more Imperium because we already have one there. So seven start and start. And then that should be everything because at that point we already have the Supremium and if we needed it, we could even get more Insanium as well. So at that point, let's see if we can't get two of each tier of gem as well as two of each tier of ingot. From there, we can upgrade our Inferium chestplate to Prudentium. We can upgrade our Prudentium chestplate to Tertium, we can upgrade our Tertium chestplate to Imperium, and we can upgrade our Imperium chestplate finally into a Supremium chestplate, which does look rather dashing if I do say so myself. And now 
we need to get the flight augment. Because again, one misconception people seem to have is that uh, just getting a full set of Supremium armor would give you creative mode flight. That is not the case. You need to get the flight augment and add it to your Supremium chest plate in order to get creative mode flight. Thankfully, we should now be able to make this fairly easily. Uh, we have currently three nether stars. However, if we grab just one uh, with a skeleton skull and then quickly pop in to our compact machine here, so long as this guy has power, which he does, uh, if we drop in that wither skeleton skull there, you would hope that that spawns in a wither, which it does. And then uh, hopefully momentarily that wither will be killed by our mob crusher. And in turn, we get our fourth nether star. So now if we head back and we grab the Supremium Essence, again, I think we needed four of this for the flight modifier. Yeah, as well as an unattuned augment. The unattuned augment, thankfully, nice and easy for us to make. Just some prosperity shards and some iron ingots. And so now back over here, we'll put the attunement augment in the middle. We'll put down four Supremium Essence along with four Nether Stars. Click the button. And boom, we have a flight augment. Now, I believe if we want to add that flight augment to our Supremium chest plate, we need to make a tinkering table, which is super easy to make, just some stone and some solium dust. So if I put that down, can I add the flight augment to this chest plate? I can. And so now if we add that to our self, look at that. We have full creative mode flight. So all you have to do is put the chest plate in the middle and then put the augment in and then you take the chest plate out and it has that augment. And so now, despite the fact that we can't really spend too much time up here because of the fact that the air is still toxic, uh, we can, if we'd like, fly around creatively. And uh, in fact, it might even be uh, easier for us to do this like inside of a compact machine. I'm actually not too sure what the Y level is in here. Uh, it is 40. So yeah, we can fully fly around inside of these compact machines and we have full creative mode flight going forward. Of course, at some point, we are going to get that uh, C scale and we are going to be able to breathe above the surface. Again, the quests are currently a little bit broken for us, but hopefully by the time we come back for the next stream, uh, all the quests will be back to where they were previously and we can push forward further into the pack. It does appear actually that we do have enough Supremium to make the full set of armor as well. I was a little concerned with how much or how little Insanium we had, but uh, I think it's actually probably doable. Now, I think what's going to make life a little easier here is if we just quickly teach our system how to make these uh, ingots and gems. So if we, for example, teach it this recipe in code, followed by, and I type in ingot, that might make my life a little easier as well. If we just do a couple of these and just encode these recipes into the system, not only is that going to make our lives easier right now, because our system does already know how to make the essences, so making the ingots from there shouldn't be too difficult for it, uh, but it should also hopefully make our lives easier in the future as well, uh, should we need any more of these ingots going forward. So we'll encode all those. I'll also do the same thing uh, for the gems as well. And of course, I should bear in mind that we do also need to teach our system how to make the base ingots and the base gems. There we go. So the prosperity gem, and thankfully we did make more patterns. We also need the prosperity ingot. Encode. But now, if we just dump all of those into this crafter, like so, uh, we should just be able to request all of the ingots that we need. And if we're going to make the full set of Supremium armor, uh, we need, I think, six of each, right? So six Supremium ingots, start and start. It just uses one uh, Insanium Essence there. And then the exact same is true for the uh, Supremium Gemstone. We need six of those as well, start and start. We're also going to need six of every other tier as well here, so six of the Imperium, we need six of the Tertium, not five. And we need six of the Prudentium along with six of the Inferium. And then of course you guessed it, the same is also true for the Gemstones, we need six of every single tier. So six uh, Inferium, we need six Prudentium, six Tertium, six Imperium. And at that point, we should now be able to start working through the tiers here. So at that point, we want to make a full set of diamond armor. And then we can start crafting that diamond armor into Imperium, Prudentium, Tertium, Imperium, and you guessed it, Supremium. 
So there we go. We now have a full set of Supremium armor. Look at that, beautiful. Uh, we can put the diamond armor and the jetpack even way back into the system. That jetpack didn't really last too long at all. Um, but one crucial thing that people have pointed out here is that you can get a water breathing augment for the helmet, which I think is going to be tremendously useful for us. To make this, we of course once again need another unattuned augment. Uh, we also need four of the uh, Prudentium Essence. Uh, right now we have two. We can request two more nice and easily. We're going to get four here, but that is fine. That's just how it's made in batches of four. Uh, we then need four Puffer Fish, which we should have over in here. We do have 54 of them ready to go. And so once again, if we take those down and over to our altar over here, that should be everything to get the water breathing augment, which is definitely going to help us out quite a bit, especially as we look at uh, expanding out the base going, uh, going forward. There we go. And just like we did before, we can bring that over to here, drop in the helmet, drop in the water breathing augment, and then if we take that back out, now we have water breathing. So if we head on underwater here, we can spend really as much time underwater as we like. There are no penalties whatsoever for us being down here. And I'm pretty sure that uh, going forward, we could also make uh, more augments for our armor as well. Uh, there's probably some kind of speed boost I think I saw as well here. Yeah, there's uh, three tiers of speed augment uh, that we can add to the leggings, none of which really look too bad. And in fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and quickly make that here just to see how fast speed three is. It's possible it might be a little too fast. I'm pretty sure we should have at least 12 sugar. We do indeed. And then we need four prudentium, four tertium, and four imperium essence. None of that should be too difficult. The imperium we have, uh, the prudentium and the tertium we can request. If we just request one of each, it will make four because it has to make them in sets of four. So we'll take four of you and four of you. And then from there, it's just a case of running this uh, through the altar a couple of times. Uh, the first one requires four sugar, one, two, three, and four with four prudentium, one, two, three, and four. And there we go. We have the speed three augment. And so once again, if we add that to our leggings, boom, and boom, we should now be able to move. Oh my goodness, yeah, quite quite a bit faster. That is that is me sprinting. This is normal, normal move speed. It might be a little too fast. I might have to, uh, between streams, I might tinker around and see how fast like tier one and tier two are because I might actually go ahead and lower the tier. Uh, thankfully, we can take this, uh, this augment here out just by doing this. Um, and so we could replace that with a lower tier if we wanted to, but uh, as of right now, that is very... Uh, very fast. People have also told me that does affect my uh, flight speed as well. And yeah, you'll see that now we can fly tremendously fast, uh, albeit at a fairly low Y level that's just above the surface, but we can now fly incredibly quickly around our admittedly very small base. That benefit does also carry through underwater as well. So in combination with water breathing, we can both swim very quickly and swim for as long as we like as well, which is going to be super useful uh, as we build forward and even if we go and explore more out into the world. But for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and ramp up the Seopolis portion of today's stream there.